Hi, I'm Bob Airy, two-time Stanley Cup champ. You're watching the Power Play Break, the place to talk about pucks. Hey, I'm Chris Riley, back here in the Power Play Break. Stu, so we're going to have some fun now. Um, I've been having fun up until this point. <laughs> clearly, you have not. <laughs> How could you clearly, tell? Clearly, you have not. <laughs> How could you tell? Um, if you were not a hockey player, what would you have become? You know, I grew up a Royal Canadian Mounted Policeman brat. I was a Mounties kid growing up, and my dad always had a very uh, significant, a real impact on me, and that uniform had a real impact on me. Uh, it's very possible I would have ended up uh, a cop back in Western Canada. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and how would you use it? Um, to f I, would, I would really like to fly. Wow, we keep getting I to would fly. Really, Everyone, I would really every like to fly. Yeah, yeah, like Superman? Yeah, that would be very cool. Um, what's the best part about being in the NHL as a player? I would say the people. I mean, the game is fun. Love to play the game. That was a lot of fun. The reason, I mean, I've been away from the game for a good stretch of time after I retired from playing. I came back to the game for the people. And, and really, you know, whatever we do, wherever we are in the world, what we do professionally, what's critical to our happiness is the people that we work with. The culture of hockey, people that are in hockey, um, are just generally good people to be around. That's why I'm here today. That's why I do what I do today. What was your toughest, toughest thing about being an NHL player? Uh, for me, it was really playing the role that I played, and it was the preparation mentally that it required. And I always remembered it was, that was, it was exhausting, it was taxing. It was, it was hard to do that. You get better at it as time goes on. It was difficult for me early. But um, it takes a lot of energy emotionally to, to do that effectively. Um, your greatest moment in the NHL? If there's one thing that just stands out to you and say, oh, just, I'll never forget that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I got a chance. We're playing the, in the Western Conference Finals in 95 against the Chicago Blackhawks. We were going into their building, and we were up in the series 3-1. to one. We went back there for, no, I guess it was 3-2. to two. We went back there for game... Uh, game six. Game six, I think so. Yeah, I think that's the way it works. So we were looking to close out the series going back in there. We were down by a goal in the middle stages of the game, and I hadn't played much up to that point. Scotty Bowman threw me out there. Long story short, I ended up scoring the tying goal. We went on to close out the, uh, the game that night, to close out the series at that night. Guys like me don't get in that situation very often. And it was great to be able to deliver, to contribute in that way. I crashed into the boards just after I scored that goal. I was down there on my knees. I was celebrating. Keith Primo came over there um, and finally said, hey, uh, we should really get back to the bench at some point here pretty quick. I'd still be there today. I was numb. I was numb after the experience. You couldn't have got the smile off my face for about two days after. Biggest influence in your career? One coach, one person that had the greatest influence over you? Wayne Fleming, may he rest in peace, was my college coach. He went on to coach for a number of NHL teams, had a very uh, uh, significant career overseas as well. Um, he coached in the Tampa Bay organization. He was with the Islanders for years, with Calgary. I had him at the call in college at the University of Manitoba. He probably taught me as much as, that stuck with me as much as any, any coach ever had. Liked playing for Wayne, good communicator. Um, he just ran a great program and was a great friend. Who gave you the moniker, the Grim Reaper? Bob Strum. We talked about him in an earlier segment. He was my first general manager, my, I guess my second coach in, in junior hockey, playing for the Regina Pats. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he put it together really <laughs> quick. It was, it was pretty amazing. It was the Grim Reaper right out of the gate. It didn't get much attention back then. Uh, not until I got to Chicago and became an everyday NHLer, and then uh, I guess I'll be the Grim Reaper. Did you do you like the moniker, or does it? Uh, what do your kids say about it? There's this old adage, you know, the harder you fight a nickname, the, t the tighter it <laughs> sticks. I don't worry about it too much. It is what it is. My kids get kind of a kick out of it. Um, my my son's uh, Twitter avatar for the longest time was Lil Grim Reaper. <laughs> 
<laughs> no longer. Um, What's your favorite NHL city? Uh, good question. You know, Chicago probably sticks out as much as any for this reason. I mean, we had great teams. It was the old building. You know, we went the distance one year. Fans there are remarkable. And the city itself is, is just, uh, you know, I, Midwestern people are really solid, salt of the earth type of people. And f just for a lot of reasons, there were all kinds of, um, you know, things that pointed to Chicago for me. Having said that, I love Nashville. Thought that was a great experience. L.A. was a great experience. Detroit, of course, was a great experience. I've been fortunate to play in a lot of great towns under a lot of great coaches. Chicago really was a unique one for me, too, because, again, that's where I kind of became an everyday NHLer. So, What's one superstition you've never given up? My one superstition that I've never given up is I make a point of not getting in the way of anybody else's superstitions. <laughs> that happens a lot in hockey. I know, because guys you, get drafted left to right. Oh, guys, I mean, you know, don't like, touch my sticks, don't do this. I mean, It's hard to keep up with everything. <laughs> I, I really don't have any superstitions. Even gave up the afternoon nap, leaving the game now. I don't do that anymore as a broadcaster. But um, I'm, I'm not a terribly superstitious guy. Like um, you didn't have a special meal? Like what was a pregame meal you always liked to have before? Okay, so I was a little stitious. <laughs> Not superstitious, maybe a little stitious. Um, I did like pasta, uh, grilled chicken, and then a green vegetable, usually broccoli. I eat that pretty much every day. Last question. How do you want your teammates to remember you? As a guy that really molded his career to just do whatever, given my skill set, to do whatever the... the the team required at a given moment in time. I mean, I, I hope they would remember the, me that way. It's, it's what I strove to do as an NHL player. Wasn't blessed with, you know, overwhelming speed or high hockey IQ, but I, uh, you know, there are other ways to contribute and I, and I hope that I did. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time tonight at the Power Play break. It's been informative and a lot of fun. Always had a good time with you. Great. That'll do it for this edition of Power Play Break. Remember, this is the place to talk about pucks.